The play is about a commission given to a certain writer named William Shakespeare called Shagspeare in the play after my favorite spelling of his name from contemporary sources. The commission is to write the official history of a crime. But the problem is the more Shagspeare, the more Shag investigates the crime, the more he realizes what actually happened is significantly different from the government version of the story. So the question becomes, uh, will Shakespeare, the official writer for the government, uh, tell the truth and risk losing his head or lose his soul by becoming a writer of propaganda? And the working out of that is the story of the play. And we work it out with the, uh, the company at the Globe Theater um, as they deal with draft after draft of his writing. Structurally, the play's a whodunit. It's a mystery. Um, Shakespeare is given uh, the gunpowder plot, which is one of the great mysteries of all time. Um, it was a conspiracy uh, in 1605. And no one knows finally who was behind it. There is an official government version of the story, and Shakespeare begins to investigate that. And as he begins to peel back the layers of the conspiracy, and even more, as he begins to realize the cost, uh, the, the cost of a government lie, he becomes involved and committed to his writing in a different way. Um, and that leads him into deeper truths, and not just political truths. It begins to lead him into the place where the personal becomes political, the politics of family, in fact, his own family, uh, and in fact, the mysteries that are involved. I think our deepest mysteries are our family, so it also begins to, to delve into the question of Shakespeare's family. This is not a historical piece in the sense of a recreation of a period. This is a, a piece that's written in modern English. Um, it will be presented in modern dress, um, the, uh, and that reflects the content of the play. The play's inciting incident took place 400 years ago, uh, but it's a play about, it's a play as much about now as it is about then. Um, it's a play about how we live in the world. One, at one point, someone in the play says, politics, uh, it's simply how we live at home, but home in the largest sense. And Shakespeare's histories always did that. They saw it, he saw history as a family drama. So it's our family, how we live in this city, how we live in this world, as seen through Shakespeare's creative power, how he lived in the world and how he lived with his family. It's a play that is what it pretends to be, and I like plays like that. Some of Shakespeare's plays are like that. In Midsummer Night's Dream, he has people putting on a play. Um, this is a play about actors putting on a play. Um, the people who will come to see it will see actors putting on a play. Um, so it's a mirror held up to theater as much as it is anything else. Fundamentally, this, it, this is about Shakespeare's troupe. Um, and Shakespeare's troupe was a remarkable group of people. Um, Shakespeare's company was the only functioning democracy in the world uh, in 1605. Um, people had shares. They were shareholders. They all participated in the, not all, but the shareholders participated within the company. And democracy creates a certain level of tension. <laughs> so it's, it's the family fights of Shakespeare's company. Um, and their ultimate triumph as theater's ultimate triumph is no matter what the fights are, come eight o'clock at night, you do the play. Or in Shakespeare's day, come two o'clock in the afternoon, you do the play. You have to meet there at a very high level. Um, so that's the struggle of the play. Can these guys get the show together and at the same time not get beheaded for telling the truth? Equivocation. I suppose the easiest way to do this is to talk about Anne Frank. If someone knocked on your door and you were Meep Gies, one of my greatest heroes, uh, who helped to hide Anne Frank and the Frank family and the others who were hidden. Um, if, if the Gestapo turned up at your door and knocked and said, are you hiding anyone in the attic of, attic of this bi business? What would the honest answer be? Would the honest answer be, and if they put your soul on it, I need you to swear on your soul the truth of this yes or no question. Are you hiding anyone in the attic? Is the true answer yes, or is the true answer no? Uh, yes is the literal truth, but how do you answer no and make that the truth that's felt? Um, because in equivocation, in the idea, if a dishonest person has posed the question to you, 
there will be no honest answer. So you must answer the equivalent question, the question that's really being asked, and you must answer it with your life. How do you get past the simple words and get to the real issues of life? Um, that's what equivocation originally meant. Uh, the word has been corrupted over time by what we have come to call equivocators. Uh, but the original idea of equivocation was a desperate search in impossible times to tell the real truth. Gary Hines is a hero of mine. Uh, I have seen Gary Hines's work for many, many years. As we finally sat down to talk and I got to meet her, uh, I realized I, many of the productions I have loved uh, over the years have been directed by Gary. I didn't even realize they were Gary's work. Uh, Gary brings an enormous humanity to everything she does. Um, she has a tremendous sense of humor and a tremendous sense of personal fierceness, and it's a great honor to be able to work with her. Shakespeare's troupe. Well, there's Shakespeare, <laughs> who evidently wasn't a very good actor. Some people have been mad at me because I've put words in Shakespeare's mouth. It never occurred to me that that would be a bad thing. I feel like, I, I feel like I've lived with him all these years. Um, but there's Shakespeare, there's Richard, um, who actually was the real Richard Burbage, uh, who ran the company, um, and who had, to, who had to account for box office. There's Robert Arman, who was Shakespeare's second clown after he lost Will Kemp. Uh, he got a more sophisticated clown, and he also doubles um, as Lady M in the Scottish play. And then there were two other characters who I took from the real company, um, a character named Sharp and a character named Nate. Uh, I don't know much about them, but I, I did research what roles they played, and I've tried to be faithful. So Ghost, Ghost of the Globe Company, forgive me if I've been wrong, uh, but I have tried to evoke what it feels like to be backstage with a group of actors struggling with their parts uh, and struggling at the same time to remain a company. I think the play is very funny. Audiences think it's very funny. Now, it's about some very grim realities. You asked me about Gary Hines a minute ago. Um, Gary Hines has a great touch with making some very serious things very, very funny. <laughs> and that's been part of the joy of, of her work over the years. This play um, has a bit of a serious heart. I mean, there are serious questions involved. But it takes place in the context of, of a theater. Um, and the great thing about theater is somehow it all works out. In theater, in this container of theater, things that cannot be solved in the world ever, can be contained because the, the, the essence of theater is great heartedness and beyond that inclusion. Theater is always trying to be more and more inclusive and the problem of the day and even the problem of our day is how do we include everyone? Theater has never had a problem with that. Um, you come together, you face the big issues, um, you tell the story and then you go out and you, you have your drinks afterwards and you tell your theater stories. This is a theater story. Um, Equivocation, I, I suppose what I want to say is welcome to the theater, um, uh, where everything finally can be handled, where nothing is forbidden, uh, and where the ultimate truth is on our side. I think that's what the play is about.